Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Cornwell, Certified Nurse Midwife with Midwifery Business Consultation. I'm very excited about this presentation. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, burnout affects us in the United States and all over the world for all staff members, providers, but especially nurse midwives, certified professional midwives, direct entry midwives, lay midwives, um, because we really have a lot on our plate. We take care of families. We're always on call. It's hard to get a vacation. Um, we have to sacrifice our families for this midwifery calling. So I'm a huge advocate of burnout education and ways to prevent it. I want more midwives out into the world and I want more families to have access to these wonderful services. The adjust Objectives of this conversation is defining what burnout actually is, some of the causes and symptoms, identifying conditions of providers, um, the distress related to and frequently mistaken for burnout, compare prevalence of burnout among midwives compared to other um, provider groups, identify structural characteristics of midwifery practices that are related to high levels of burnout, identify modifiable characteristics of midwifery practices that can really help with decreasing and risk factors for burnout, create strategies to encourage engage engagement and preventing burnout among your team and midwifery community. What is burnout? Burnout is a special type of work-related stress. It's a type of stress that can be physical or emotional. I know that depression a lot of times will get intermingled with it and even anxiety, just the feeling of the on-call and the demands and not being able to separate work-life balance. Sometimes it is involves a sense of reduced accomplishment. You're working so, so hard, but you can't serve enough ladies. The, the money is not coming in for covering the overhead like you would like. Um, there's just, you're not accomplishing your perceived amount that you could do. Loss of personal identity. I know with me that was huge. Um, just having an identity of midwifery absorb every other identity that I have. Being a mom, being a wife, being a sister, being a friend, um, being anything else but a midwife. Burnout isn't a medical condition. Some experts think that other conditions such as depression and other mental health conditions are behind burnout. Some research suggests that many people experience symptoms of burnout, but don't believe their job is the main cause. It might just be the combination of everything else. Um, the eating, the exercise, the, how you handle stress, the, the mental resiliency has a huge impact on your burnout. Whatever the cause, it can be affecting your physical and mental health. And I know suicide is getting more and more rampant with everything happening. And we really want to preserve safety for our families, for ourselves, and opportunities at more access to this wonderful service. But we have to have decreased burnout, um, good business structures for midwives to support it. And that's why Midwifery Business Consultation was created with that passion and mid mission to support midwives on their business structure and emotional support for professional development. The extinction of motivation or incentive, especially where one's devotion to a cause or relationship fails to produce the desired result. That's a common definition for burnout. Everybody else can have a different viewpoint, but that one's pretty well established into our society. Why burnout awareness is so important, I've already hinted it at a few times. Um, it causes mental health disorders, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. You have less safety for your families you're taking care of. The outcomes are worse. You're going to miss things, your lack of concentration. Um, there's definitely a safety component to burnout. Increasing midwives leaving the profession, we're having a high turnover. The latest statistics was an average of seven years of practicing before switching careers or just um, not practicing at all. And I've even noticed less and less midwifery students going into it. It blew my mind talking to other midwives. We don't have a lot of research of how many students start out and actually finish. Um, as far as out of hospital setting and apprenticeship model, I've been blown away from my verbal discussion with midwives practicing a long time. It's like 10% of their students actually become midwives that start out. And so to me, I feel like 
we can really we're getting burnout on students before they even finish we're getting burnout on midwives because that mindset that burnout is not making a good clinical site for um, more midwives to learn so there's definitely a compounding cyclical effect we can't grow midwifery we can't serve families safely we can't train our next generation of midwives well astounding stats of burnout um this one i just blew my mind that there's really not a lot of good research there's one that recently came out in 2018 we'll talk about very shortly but the last midwifery had actual study with burnout was from 1986 and it ranged between 8 to 21 percent and at that point it did seem significantly lower than the rest of the obstetric counterparts in the United States but you'll see with the newest um, surveys and studies that have been done that in 2018 we have much higher statistics of burnout so in oh, 2017 um, there was an extensive survey done and it's now around 40 percent so that's a massive jump um, it would be great to see the trends and compare to other obstetric facilities and providers at this point but when we have about half of our midwives getting burnt out it just that's too high it's definitely too high we need to figure out how to fix this challenge occurring um, the business structure the work-life balance the self-care the um, good clinical rotation the the fee schedule for reimbursement the um education to families of access to the services there's just there's so much can be done to decrease burnout this is very important to me because of my personal story with burnout i went through um a pretty significant dark place in 2017 and i've really been using my story to inspire others that when they're feeling darker they're starting to go down that path um, learn from others listen to your body no stepping back is important getting help getting the resources support having a life coach counselor psychologist um, a good strong professional support team is so important I felt trapped in a life tunnel that I couldn't escape as time went on the light at the end of the tunnel kept getting dimmer and dimmer I couldn't find a way out every decision I made things got more complicated when women depended on me for birth availability 24 7 i worked 80 plus hours every week i hadn't had a vacation in four years i cried on the inside when my phone rang i rarely saw my husband and kids i was fighting with insurance companies to get paid so staff could get their earned wages i felt hopeless helpless and lost these are different signs of burnout. You can feel isolation, exhaustion, detachment, feeling hopeless, increased sickness because your immune system's weaker from that constant adrenaline, irritability, loss of enjoyment, impaired concentration, loss of appetite, frequent sadness, and anxiety. Other possible causes of these symptoms, and these are different um, medical conditions that can be mixed up or it could be compounding with the burnout. Compassion fatigue, that was definitely strong for me. Post-traumatic stress disorder, vicarious trauma, moral distress, anxiety, and depression. Compassion fatigue is defined as a progressive and cumulative process that is caused by prolonged, continuous, and intense contact with patients, the use of self, and exposure to stress, a state where the compassionate energy that is expended by the providers, just like midwives, has surpassed their restorative process with recovery power being lost. And I think that's so important when we don't have a good work-life balance, we're not going on vacation, we're not rotating call coverage, our adrenaline is constantly we're always on our guard we don't get a good regular sleep we always are available for birth we're doing office we're multitasking there's always something to be done and if we're not taking the initiative to structure our practices right or setting personal boundaries of delegating things um, having partners on your team having clear expectations with our families we serve you really can go down that um, direction of compassion fatigue quite quickly Moral distress, the person is aware of a moral problem, acknowledges moral responsibility, and makes a moral judgment about the correct action. Yet, as a result of real or perceived constraints, participants in perceived moral uh, do wrongdoing. 
So that comes down to they're feeling this guilt that they feel they have to do something, even though part of them, those those medical ethics, those moral ethics, you're feeling um, that you should be doing something else, but maybe there's a regulation, maybe there's an insurance reimbursement, maybe there's a, a, a guilt feeling of cutting corners on X, Y, Z because of cost or because of time constraints. So it is really important to acknowledge those things, figure out if you can do something about them or can't. Um, is it a safety issue or is it more of an internal guilt that you have to work through? Vicarious trauma, which happens quite frequently with the birth community, a lot of our families go through traumatic events, um, poor outcomes, transfers, um, co-management challenges, but we are also the care providers that are hearing a lot of, even just in their personal life, we are the ones absorbing all of their woes and concerns and being their counselor, um, whether it's during a prenatal visit or actually a poor birth outcome, we are part of that event. We are seeing it. We are um, their one to go to, and we have to have really good resiliency on our own mental health to be able to handle um, supporting families and being part of those more traumatic experiences. Post-traumatic stress disorder, exposure to actual or threatened death, serious injury, or sexual violence in one of the following ways. Directly experience the traumatic event, witness in person the event as it occurs, learning about the traumatic event from a close family member or friend, experiencing repeated or extreme exposure to aversion details of the traumatic event. Um, and so it's hard with post-traumatic stress disorder because it can linger for years and years and years. You think that you've gotten through it, you hear a person's name, you have a smell, you have a noise. I know in wartime, gunshots are very traumatic years and years later for war victims and for midwives, um, whether it's emotional abuse, physical abuse, some sort of trauma that really hit deep to your core and something could trigger it very easily and knowing are you going down an anxiety attack? Are you getting just to be able to expose yourself to that traumatic event or memory less and less um, trauma it's causing you in time? So definitely need some professional support when there's been a traumatic event. There's a lot of great midwives across the country that actually have social workers, counselors, either on staff or direct referrals so that the staff and the families get that good debriefing after a more typical associated um, traumatic birth experience. But it doesn't necessarily have to be birth. It could be work trauma. It could be um, patient, um, customer concerns. There's a lot that could happen. So these things all overlap, but they are separate. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of one, it could be a little bit of everything. So burnout, compassion fatigue, vicarious trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, and moral distress are all very damaging to your physical and mental health and can go through different stages, easily can overlap. You could be through going through all of them depending on where you are in the burnout process. So I wanna spend a little bit of time you just looking at these pictures, when I do this presentation in front of midwives versus a recording, I ask them, this is the time for the engagement. I ask what they, what emotions drive them when they see these women, um, what feelings are they describing from their faces and which women can they relate the most to, whether right now or in the past. And I get a consistent theme of headaches, frustration, pure exhaustion, um, just feeling like a lot of the head, just they're all holding their head. They're all really just burnt out of wherever they are in life. So it is always interesting when that part of discussion, and I would encourage you to have a discussion with your staff, other midwifery colleagues about their feelings of burnout, their past experiences, what they did to get through it, if they're in the early stages, how they prevented it to get darker, um, if they're in the deep, dark, burnout, getting help for each other is so, so important. As questions to ask yourself, because I think my mistake was I kept pushing it off, pushing it up, kept saying, it'll get better, it'll get better. I'm such a strong woman. This practice is so needed. I am filling such an important service. Buck it up, be tough. Um, you'll, you'll get through this. It'll get better in time. And by telling myself those denial questions, it actually got worse and it got too, too dark 
too deep that it was a lot harder for me to get out of than if I would have done it six, eight months earlier. So these are some of the questions to ask yourself. Have you become cynical or critical at work? Do you drag yourself to work or have trouble getting started? Have you become irritable or impatient with coworkers, customers, or clients? Do you lack the energy to be consistently productive? Do you find it hard to concentrate? These are some other questions to think about. Do you lack satisfaction from your current achievements? Do you feel disillusioned about your job? Are you using other forms of substance, drugs, alcohol, um, food to fill a void? I know it's hard with women. We tend to pick sugars and instant gratification. I think as midwives, we if, we, if it happens, we don't openly talk about it because we're on call and we have so much dependency on our mental state for um, birth call that drug and alcohol, even if it occurs, doesn't openly get talked about. Um, I think it's the other direction that most women tend to not eat the greatest. They eat more processed food. They eat faster. They don't really think about what they're eating, put a lot more calories in, in that sugar content to try to make an instant feel good for the emotions that are happening longer term. Have your sleep habits changed, which is hard as a midwife because they're always inconsistent, um, but it's nice when you have call coverage and you have a support team that you can take a break. You can get a few days of good sleep. That's so important. Are you troubled by unexplained headaches, stomach or bowel troubles or other physical complaints? That's definitely related to stress, to burnout, to exhaustion. These are three big elements of burnout that we see across the country and the world. Emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and lack of sense of personal efficacy. So definitely the, the lack of personal identity and the lack of just where you are, why um, not being very quote unquote perceived as productive or actually as being productive. Um, but yeah, you just, you, you start losing who you are for sure. Causes of burnout, the biggest one I see is the lack of control, not being able to make decisions about your schedule, your work volume. We're taking care of families nine months in advance. You can't all of a sudden say, okay, I want a vacation if you don't have a call coverage and a good backup. You have to have plans 10 months in advance, even if you want a vacation in two to four weeks. Um, maybe there's a wedding coming up. Maybe there's um, you want to be there for your sister's birth across the country. You've got to plan far in advance or at least have a good supporting collaboration with midwives in the area, which is so important. Dysfunctional workplace dynamics. This one is hard because a lot of times the midwives are the business owners. They're the ones hiring teams. You sometimes get a collaboration with other midwives in the area and it's just working out the details of that relationship. But when you work side by side and you have very close knit, it's, it's dating, it's a marriage, it's divorce when you separate. It's a very hard relationship to go through because you're so interconnected. You talk often, you're taking care of the families together. It's a very exciting time in their life. So um, definitely trying to work through difficult staff um, relationships and getting to the underlining cause is really important. Unclear job expectations. I think it's hard as the leader when you're tired and exhausted and there's so much happening and so much expansion, you may want things delegated to other people. That may not be what they hired on for. They may not have this training and skill set for it yet. There may be, not be a clear expectation of what you want of each person. So it's so important when you're being a business owner to clearly delegate, clear, have expectations, um, handouts, training, evolve and adapt your practice to the needs um, at that moment and your needs at that moment. Extremes of activity. This is one that midwives are really hard at. We just go, 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 go. We'll have three bursts in 24 hours. Then we'll try to do office afterwards. We just, we keep saying, we'll sleep later. We'll take care of ourselves later. We'll, 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 we'll make that up to our kids next time. And so it's hard because you're always not taking some downtime. I see very few midwives take lunch breaks, take, um, Take just a day off, one day a week, having a bunch of scattered office days versus just a couple concrete days and get a, a, a system and a routine is so important. Um, meditating, exercise, drinking lots of water, organic, healthy foods into our body really make a difference. And I can't stress enough getting a break from work, taking off call, taking a vacation, spending time with family and hobbies is so important.
causes a burnout, um, definitely a lack of social support. Um, it may be because it's not present or it may be because the midwife isn't utilizing it. Um, but you definitely, you feel isolated at work. You feel isolated in your personal life. You feel like nobody understands. Um, it's like there's a few midwifery groups across the country that they collaborate together. They do continuing education. They support each other. They really do a good job of that professional development, um, safety, emotional support to each other and relate. And I wish I would see that more often across the country and the world. Work-life balance, we've stressed it over and over again. If you're working 40 hours a week versus 80 hours a week and um, you just, you don't get any time for family. By the time you're done working, you're just exhausted. You want to just sleep. You want to eat. You just want to turn everything off when your family just wants to spend time with you and have a conversation. And you're so exhausted by that point um, that you just need the bare essentials of survival. So it is really important um, to talk at your first visits, to have clear expectations when somebody could call, when someone could page, when someone can email what is routine, what is non-routine, when to call the office line, when to call your cell phone, um, different paths of education and resources is so important because if they're calling you at four in the morning questioning an over-the-counter medication that's in a handout or could wait till the next morning, you really don't want to be waking up scattered sleep for just the births and urgent things. Consequences of burnout. Um, there's different levels of the consequences. So care level has to do with directly to the family, um, the complications, the, the satisfaction scores, not catching things when um, there's near misses, longer recovery time because of those complications. So I, I definitely think we, we think of ourselves as burnout and we'll just survive, we'll survive even if we suffer, but our friends, our family, and our clients suffer along with us. Physical health, you definitely Definitely um, stress constantly on the system is adrenal fatigue, the hypothalamus pituitary axis gets dysfunctional, the hormonal imbalance, uh, alcohol, food, drug dependency, mental health disorders, um, higher chance of comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, um, stress just as a number in our bodies. We don't make enough time for self-care, the meditation, the exercise, the water, the eating well. Organizational level, so that has to do with your business, um, the work satisfaction of you, the work satisfaction of your team, um, higher turnover of staff, higher people calling in because it's just not a good work like in a working environment. So definitely want to think about the energy that you're putting out to your family, your friends, your clients, and your coworkers. Professional well level, a lot of midwives just stop practicing. They don't keep up with the training. They're burnt out. They don't even want to consider taking a student because they can't even handle the volume they have now and train someone. There's definitely a lot of um, consequences to professional burnout as a whole, and that's why I'm very passionate about it. So this is from an anonymous midwife. I saw no alternative but to get out. But now I've lost for, far more than my income. I've lost my community. I've lost my purpose and meaning. An identity that I had lost had most of my adult life. I think that's important to point out because a lot of midwives are the breadwinners. They do have a financial obligation to what they're doing on top of a calling. Um, and it is difficult because sometimes the burnout will go longer and longer because of the financial perception of needing to continue doing this to support the family and to support the plan and the business versus the self-care. I felt so mad both of them, at both of them, clients and family members. I felt myself blaming them in an ugly, of course, unwarranted way. Mad at myself and, of course, just mad and exhausted. I could definitely relate to that. Um, didn't matter who would talk to me. I was short. My husband, my kids, my um, clients, I, I tend to hit. I kept it hidden more. But when my phone would ring, it would be between the crying and the anger. I just, I wanted to step away. I wanted people not to be so dependent on me anymore. Ways to prevent burnout, definitely self-care. You've heard me talk about it many, many times, taking breaks, having good office structure, having good team you've hired, 
having good training, job roles for everybody, taking breaks, having call coverage, whether it's within your practice or sharing with someone else, drinking lots of water, um, good food, sleep, meditating hobbies. These are things we tell our clients and we know very well about them, but we forget that we have to take our own advice. Professional development, definitely continuing education, keeping up with your skill set, evidence and standards change. Um, leadership and business classes are really powerful, especially if it's going to be um, a staff in a larger business um, midwifery model. You're, you're responsible for a lot more people and staff challenges and growth and um, the financial aspect. Abundance versus scarcity mindset to me was really important. Um, shifting my mind of opportunities and boundaries and what is possible versus negative, like having a gratitude journal, having um, always that positivity. It, it, even if the exact same thing is happening, you're going to look at it differently. We don't, we don't want to be playing mental games with ourselves. Um, reading books, audiobooks are great when you're driving to home visits. I know when we're super busy, it, the last thing we're able to do is sit and read a book. So I rarely listen to the radio anymore. I'm always learning about something. Hiring um, someone to support you, whether it's a counselor, a life coach, a business coach, someone to help customize to you one-on-one -on -one accountability, goals, discussions. That support is so, so important. Ways to prevent burnout in a, a practice climate way is just a supportive environment. Um, my ideal practice is two to four midwives. When you have a smaller practice by yourself, or even if it's just two and one wants to go on vacation, one wants to go on maternity leave, to be on call 24 seven is pretty demanding. So, I mean, three to four midwives is more ideal. You get a little more of a cushion. When you start getting four to six, eight midwives, I talk about pods, little mini subset practices within the practice so that the family still get that good relationship with their midwives. We don't want to have a large midwifery practice where we're starting to lose that relationship that's so important part of midwifery on top of supporting our midwives. Um, making sure that there's students involved, there's receptionists, there's birth assistants, you've got people on your team, an office manager to delegate to and to help you, a medical assistant um, that can help look over labs, get some um, tests ordered out, some of these things that can be delegated so you don't have to do everything yourself. Definitely having a business and a strategic plan, which is my strength of why I started Midwifery Business Consultation. We want a strong foundation to your practice. We, you're going to be in the honeymoon phase the first few years of it opening. It's that three-year to five-year mark is where really tested those cracks and the foundation will come out. If we didn't set up things, we didn't plan ahead for what ifs, for growth, for exit strategies, for XYZ and the overhead costs, it makes it much more stressful and a higher chance of burnout. Strong mission and vision statements, publicly posting them so the staff can see them, talking about them frequently at staff meetings. If there's an additional service you want to add, there is a, a certain need you want to fulfill, it's always good for the whole team to know what the mission is and remind you so that you're keeping on track of that or why you started the practice and where you want it to go. Keep the policies and procedures updated, um, and that includes the fee schedules, the billing systems, the financial agreements. You want to keep up with regulations. You want to keep up with state laws. You want to keep up with standards of care um, that'll reduce the risk for your practice, that'll improve safety, um, and especially fee schedules. I think it's a bad habit. We make it, and very few midwives every year will review them. You want to compensate for inflation. You want to renegotiate. You want to double check your overhead. Um, I think that's a lot of times where the financial revenue challenges come aren't keeping up with the the billing systems and the fee schedules and making sure you're getting paid what you're worth and what your overhead requires. Staff training, handouts, continuing education, being a team, learning together, growing together. Um, there's going to be good outcomes, bad outcomes, honoring both. Talk about um, testimonials, talk about high customer satisfaction scores just as much as areas of improvement. Well-written staff contracts, you have clear expectations among each other, what your role will be, um, where's the opportunity for evaluations and um, constructive criticism and building that relationship. Um, marketing campaigns is definitely important. 
when you're feeling burnt out and you're feeling the pressure of you want to have certain women come your way, you want to increase the volume because you're considering adding another staff, that marketing campaign is so, so important to have. Malpractice insurance, life disability insurance, if that rare situation, something happens to your partner or you're not able to work because you hurt your back, you got in a car accident, those are things that will really affect burnout, the success of your practice, having an office manager, having a financial planner, accountant, all these important people on your team and budgeting for them for the beginning. I think that's what's hard too is a midwives in the beginning have a low overhead, they tend to do everything themselves and then when it gets to the point that their volume is so busy to add these additional people on their team, there's not a budget compensated in the fee schedule and overhead for it. So you want to have those things from the beginning and understand the value of importance um, including the attorney with the, the legal, the financial agreements, the um, malpractice insurance. Making myself first isn't selfish, but self-awareness. I'd had to tell myself that over and over again, because I would feel this intense guilt if I started to think about myself first. Like my, I would always eat at the end after my kids had eaten. I would always go to bed after everybody was taken care of. I'd always be doing something for everybody else. And then once everything else was done, then I tried to take care of myself. And then I had to reshift my mind that the best person I am, I'm going to be a a better person for everybody else. So if I can keep myself as healthy, um, as happy, well taken care of, I'm going to be by far better for everybody else. It's similar to doing some exercise first thing in the morning. You do 20 minutes of exercise, you're actually going to gain back a lot of memory retention, a lot of um, just energy and and the 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 flow that you have to everyone else, you're going to be much happier and more efficient throughout the day by taking a little time to exercise and take care of yourself first. So this was a time when I do the presentation um, that I would ask people for questions and just reinforcing that midwives aren't the typical profession. We look at things differently. We, we have a heart of gold. Um, and we just have to remember that for us to continue to serve and continue to keep that heart of gold, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to have businesses and structures and boundaries and um, self-care part of our practice model, um, our business model, our life practices and habits to be able to long term. I want us to be as midwives to retire happy and um, for 30, 40 years practicing versus seven years you're burnt out and your heart is just so broken from the profession. So please don't hesitate to send me any questions, feedback, um, anything at all. Put some comments below, shoot an email to midwifery business consultation. Um, at gmail.com. You could go to the website, midwiferybusinessconsultation.com. So there's a lot of great resources out there. There's a lot of great support. Um, and I hope to get to meet you sometime in the future.